Hello. Lee's Liberal Democrat councillor Peter Wexham has written the Political Viewpoint article for the July 13th edition of the Lee Times. Peter is with me now to talk through his article and to expand on some of the points included in it. Say so, hello Peter, how are you? Oh well I'm but fine, not too bad at all. Good, I'm Keep glad. busy. Good. <laughs> Um, you've started your article with the government's decree that Southend must provide 23,500 extra homes by 2040 and also that uh, it's got to find 9,000 new jobs as well. Two very big numbers. Can you talk me through that a bit please? Well, usually when they, um, you, you put in a certain amount of houses or properties you're supposed to supply local jobs to go with the local community rather than having everybody commuting. But the trouble is, most people, if they've got businesses, want to be on the arterial on the way up to the M25. And most, most of the homes are sort of down in Shoebury. I mean, they had to do that at Shoebury on the garrison. So they allocated an area there for them. Um, business park but nobody would take it up because it's too far away from the m25 for businesses to set themselves up um so if you put in little shopping parades it's very hard to get people to take them up but part of the ruling is that you've, you've got to supply jobs x amount of jobs to go with x, x amount of properties right. and um it's not a easy thing to tie together right is is the um I mean, you can you can supply the site but you can't supply the jobs <laughs> no well you you were just saying the, the uh when they built the garrison i mean that was a good few years ago now are those business places that yeah. they provided then still empty um i think they've now reversed it and turned it over for housing because they could, couldn't sell this site for anybody to take it on right right so then that's a, a, a genuine problem having to provide nine thousand new jobs as well i didn't realize that yeah. tied in with this um number of new houses that's part of the same deal. yeah apparent it's under the same um things that they try to make you do yeah, yeah. okay um but you know if you if you've got a especially a big business or medium-sized business and you're moving stuff about they want to be in thorough or down at Basildon about the most of it you know they want to get on and off the M25 to move things about rather than going up trying to get through this town it, it takes you an hour to get through the town to get to Shoebury doesn't it you know <laughs> no, it does um <laughs> You've said this is the biggest challenge the town has had to face in drawing up the local plan for the next 20 years. What, what does all that involve? The main thing is if you don't do it, you can't, um, and developers come forward and want to put development somewhere, and you haven't got a local plan, an updated one, they could just go to appeal and the minister would grant them the permission. So you have to have a, a borough local plan ready that lays down what you expect of any developer that's coming along to do to develop within the borough, um, all the criteria and everything else. It's in five stages. It, this this one now is in stage two. It's not set in stone. It's part of the the, the rigmarole of going forward. And you have to then go to consultation with the public because they've already consulted with the businesses and the, the developers and the landowners, and they're all ha happy to build on the green belt. And um, we had a borough local plan back in the 90s where we wanted to hold the the, the borough wanted to hold the green belt, and when it went to the minister it came back that it's um you can keep it for now but it they classified it as white um white land or white belt 
which means it's there for future development, which means 10 years after that, it can then go out and be developed, which is now where Fawcett's Farm is going to be and the football ground and all that stuff. We tried to keep that bit of green belt, but we weren't allowed to because the ministers overturned it in the borough local plan. Right. So if you, you've got to try and get it right, let the government accept it, then it's got to take you through to the next 20 years, basically. And at the end um, of 20 years, you're back to square one. At the, um, yeah, they've got to do it all over again then. Right. <laughs> right. So nothing's off limit and, between. Uh, and, and the trouble is with what we've got now, I mean, 23,500 23, properties. It's, it's like another Raleigh or a Rochford, isn't it? It's a small town. It's not a, you know, it's just a village. It's no, quite, no. You know, it's quite an enormous amount of people. Yeah. Um, it, we had it at a scrutiny last night and at the scrutiny committee, it, it came up there arguing about with these, about the green belt because, I mean, I didn't vote for get rid of the Green Belt. I voted to go out to consultation, which I'll come back to in a minute. But it appeared there last night that if you, all these, you know, 23,500, if we had to build that in the town as we got now and keep the Green Belt, we'd need over 100 tower blocks across the town to, to put all those houses in. You know, there's nowhere else to put them. <laughs> so um sorry about that that's all right it's all there so you know it makes it very um it's all right this i've put, hung it up it makes it very awkward you know but it, it puts it in perspective in your mind a hundred over a hundred tower blocks if you had to put them up all over the town in leeds you know eastward and everywhere else yeah, that's how much it, it, <laughs> it makes you realise just how many properties you're going to have to find. And without the green belt, it's very hard. So what I'm trying to do now in this article hmm. is to go to consultation with the public and hopefully get the public to, to you know, take up the consultation as the developers have. But they're not the public, if they'll take up the, con you know, the consultation and say we want to keep the green belt, um, that will help and also contact the MPs um, because the government's figures are, are balmy, really. I mean, it's just haven't got anywhere to build them. And it really is, uh, you know, we need to get the government to really change the numbers. The green belt isn't a problem, it's the numbers the government are forcing on us is the problem. And if we can get the public to actually get involved in that and let, the, let everybody know, it'll um, you know, put some put a bit of power behind it to try and save the green belt. So as a result of what happens with the consultation, is it that it's possible to get the government to change that or are you just hoping to build enough local support that you force them but outside of the, the structure that exists uh, well both in it but yeah, both the idea is both because i mean when it goes if when it moves on and goes on to the, the inspector the government's um, housing inspector when it goes to them all the consultations go with it and if, if you've got developers put their consultation in, we'd like to build here, build there, build this, build that. And landowners are happy because most of that land on the Green Belt has been brought up by developers. And um, sitting on it as, you know, for years on end, they've let the farmers continue working it because um, they get a rent off it from that. But it's sitting there waiting to be changed because once it goes from agriculture to development, the land value is massively higher. And um, that's how they sit on these plots of land all over the place, you know, and I'm just waiting and that's that's what's come out here. But we need the public really, and so we, we haven't got enough green bills as it is. And um, well, that's what I'm trying to do is to, you know, let everybody know it's not, not a political thing, it's just let's all work together and try and 
control this because the numbers are, are what is is the problem. You know, the numbers the government's forcing on us. If you can get enough uh, of the local population involved and lobbying, do you think there's a realistic chance of getting these numbers reduced? Well, I, I think so, and I think the government do as well now because the by-election that took place um, a couple of weeks ago that the Liberal Democrats won was mainly based on the planning look, uh, the planning bill that's coming through Parliament and what it's going to do to their area. And I mean, normally they'd still vote Conservative, but they didn't because they wanted to show the government that they're not happy with the planning bill. Not only have they got the HS2 going through it, but they've also got all these numbers of houses to, to build all around their countryside. Um, it was a sort of protest in a way. But, you know, if we can get a, a public sort of protest like that here, so, every, you know, the MPs are well aware of what the situation is, it might make life a little bit different. Mm. And so, I mean, there was a bit in the paper the last week about Castle Point. I mean, they, they've got 6,000 to find and they're having arguments there with their MP where these 6,000 properties are going to go. Well, they've got a lot more room to put properties than we have, mm. um, but they're arguing over 6,000 in Castle Point. I know we've got more people in the town, but that should be a, th a thing of saying, well, you've already got a full town. Perhaps, perhaps the, one, the ones that need enlarging are, are the smaller towns around, you know, the districts to take a few more rather than treat, keep piling them into, into the congested area. I think um, I mean, where they built on, where they, when they built down in Shubury, they lay out the houses and but let it go all up. So, to, you know, but they've got green spaces, they've got open areas. Yet in the way where we are congested, any little any little space ends up getting built on. You know, there's no green, very little green spaces, especially between houses or in the areas of the centre of Lee. Um, you know, we lose all our open spaces, whereas you know they new new builds they end up you have to put you know trees and bushes and playgrounds and all sorts of things in. Mm. And there's one there's one rule for the new new builds and then another rule for the, you know where everybody is condensed into, which is where we are in Lee at the moment. Mm. Um, you, say, you say in your article that um, it's estimated that more than three thousand homes will be built in the bigger Lee area. Um, trying to imagine where you could put three thousand extra homes actually in the Lee area. I, I can't imagine myself. Is there areas that are earmarked? Um, not that I know of, all I can imagine in that, I don't, I'm not sure what I mean by the Lee, big, the bigger Lee area. It's obviously not Lee Ward, because you've got Lee Ward and West Lee Ward, and the other side of the London Road, you've got Belfares, Blenheim, mm. and, you know, usually probably up to Blenheim Chase or something, might be the area that's the size of um, the town council area or something like that. But the only place I can see where a lot of these go is on the London Road, where they have been doing a lot of conversions. And they can probably go a bit higher along the London Road than they can in the middle of the town. The mm. Lee. Mm. But I can't, still can't see where you can get 3,000 in. Mm. Mm. And um, yeah, down in Thorpe Bay, it's in the hundreds, mm. where they've got lots of green areas and lots of houses that have got, look, you know, the, the houses down there have got, got more garden space than the, the, the 10 houses in Lee have got mm, mm, mm. because they're, they're all big plots, big houses and getting extended and everything else. And it's not, <laughs> they don't stick a figure of 3,000 on Thought Bay, you know. That's what, uh, that does anger the people of Lee a lot when another, you yeah, have another tall building here and another tall building there. Nothing ever happens down the other end of the town there. You, you state the sewage works, can that cope with the number of homes, the electricity companies, the gas companies, doctors, uh, interestingly, the Hanningfield Reservoir as well, which uh, I hadn't really connected myself with feeding water to this area, but uh, 
is it going to be that the Hanningfield Reservoir is going to be expanded to try and help cope? Well, that, that's an unknown. I mean, they get it from the rivers of North Essex and up through Suffolk and that to feed the, the, the reservoir. That isn't that doesn't just supply here. It supplies Malden. It supplies Basildon, and all the little villages all around South Essex, as well as you know South End and I think Thurrock probably gets something from the other end. But mm. it's you know the the link is there. I mean uh, there are years of drought where the reservoir has got very low. Over you know in my lifetime I've seen your pictures of it. It's, see part of the village that was submerged in it. Um, hasn't happened for a while, but, you know, if you keep adding all these properties, it isn't just the South End 23,000. Rochford have got to find out that, you know, Basildon have, um, Castle Point, everybody, every town has got to find extra, extra amount of um, properties from what the government's putting on them. Mm. It's 2040 sounds quite a long way off, but it's only another 19 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. you know, and, and and if you're going to be built, build, so even if they did say they got the green belt, you've got to get the plans together. What's going to happen there? Where are you going to do it? The road layouts and everything like that. I mean, it's going to take a few years to schemes together, let alone building them. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, it's, it's easy for government just to say, well, you know, you can do this, you can do that, and just leave it to the local authorities to get to, you know, take the can back on it all. Mm -hmm. uh, we do, I mean, we need properties. I mean, there's lots of people living in squalor in certain parts of the town that can't get on the housing list or anything else. They're just sitting there, with the, you know, they've got families and that with milk, milk on the walls and every, all sorts of things. But, I mean, we, there are people that need home housing. There's also people that grow up in the town like we have, and they've got families when they grow up. They want to live in a town, but if you know, if there's no way, if it's too tight, you can't um, afford to live here. That's one of the problems that you know local families have with the you know, till the parents die, they can't afford to live in South End or in the Lee or wherever you want to live locally. And um, people like to you know stay in their own communities. Mm -hmm. But it's very hard for, for them to do that. So we do need properties and all the time properties are scarce. The price goes up on it. But the other problem is, is that because of, since the Corby thing took over, the bug, there seems to be no end of people moving out of London coming this way. You get a bit of sea air, I suppose. But the trouble is when they, the developers build, they don't build for the people that were living in flats and squalor in South End. <laughs> they build these half a million to a million pound, you know, luxury places to pull in the millionaires. You know, we've had it in Lee down in the Bell Hotel down there. There's Eden Point just along Rectory Grove. They're not built for the normal, the local community. They're for people that have got a tidy bit of money. One that's going you know, to get up there and have a good sea view and enjoy themselves. But, you know, they're pulling them in into the town. We don't, <laughs> we need to house the people in the town, not pull more people into the town to be housed. And mm. um, it's, the it, trouble is, you have to, you're in, in control, you have to actually do it. But it isn't what really what, how, how we all visualize the town. And um, you do need to do, you know, do the things that are needed for the local community, which is one of the things we are trying to do is to get more like what they used to call council housing or social housing now, where where they can be, you know, rented out at a fair rent. Yeah. You know, so a lot of properties come on the market and because people used to have their pension from work and the work paid their pensions for the rest of their lives, they now get a lump sum and they have to invest that money because that's their pension. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are buying up properties in auctions and things and renting them out because that gives them an income and they've actually got a 
a, a property that's got, got a value for it. So, you know, which has made it more commercial in the way people are using their pension funds. Mm. Then you've got the big pension funds that do it themselves and own great big areas like shopping centres and all sorts of things. You know, the bigger pension funds, they, they buy up, you know, small blocks of things here, there and everywhere. Nobody ever knows who, who owns them. It's, it's, it's a sort of um, thing that money makes money jobs. And what we really need is homes for people. And not on the green belt, if I can help it. <laughs> well, it's a really difficult one to answer, isn't it? Because on the one hand, there's only so much space. On the other hand, you absolutely need new properties, more properties. You kind of can't have both. But that's, that's right. So what's the solution? Do you know? Well, the logic is that the government should look at what they're doing. You know, when they say these numbers and chuck it at you. Well, hang on, mate. We haven't got enough room for those pe those people. You know, I mean, we're 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 surrounded. You know, there's. I mean, they, they might look at it and say, "Well, Leeds is bigger than you, but they're still expanding." But probably Leeds has got rooms around it to actually move the green belt out a little bit and do things. But Southend's got hasn't got room to move at all. I know you're also concerned uh, towards the end of the, uh, your article. Uh, about the impact on the planet, you know, versus tarmacking over everything. How bad is that going to be locally? Do you know? Well, it, it's a job to actually say, but it, whatever that happens, you, you're putting a small, another town within the town. That's all concrete bricks and tarmac roads. Um, it's, you know, you're not to, we ha luckily we haven't got woodland that's going to be knocked down. I mean, this is going to start knocking Belfair's woods down. I don't think they get away with that one. But, you know, that's why they're looking at the farmland down off um, north, on the borough boundary to the north, down off Thorpe Bay. Uh, but the planet side of it, I mean, it costs a lot, you know, there's, there's a lot of heat has to be made to make concrete. Cement, rather, to make the concrete. You know, you're, whatever you're doing, you're um, the inf environmentally, it's not good. Mm -hmm. You have to house people, but you've got to try and do it in a sustainable way. And obviously, all these properties, with what's going on on the environment at the moment, they will all have to teach a lot tougher standards than the houses that we all live in now. Um, you know, they have to be. In the insulation and stuff like that built into them. Um, and, you know, they have to have power points for plugging your car in and all that stuff. And um, probably solar panels on the roof and panels for heating water and to try and make them carbon neutral. Um, but at least the, that law should be coming in, especially after we get the um, government are doing this national inter, international meeting haven't they about the environment in the autumn yes yes you know they can't be seen can't be seen not to be doing things themselves so the government will be coming forward with a lot of things tightening up on new builds i dare say and um but it, it makes you wonder sometimes because you've got one department telling you one thing another department telling you something else you know not happy about the twenty three thousand five hundred homes extra in the borough don't want to build on the green belt the call is for local people to get involved in the consultation and basically try and get the government to change their mind on these numbers is is, is that right well I'd, you know if people w would work and hopefully say we don't want to lose any more green belt because we've hardly got any left and to, you know, leave the green belt alone and change the numbers. That's the problem. If you can change the numbers, I mean, even if you halve the number, that's still, that's still a lot, and that would probably be hard, hard to do as well. So I, I really don't know what you can't. It's, it's a job to come up and say, well, what the numbers should be. 
but you can look at it and say, well, hang on a minute. When you sort of push it out and say, well, that would be a, if you just got the town as it is now and leave the green belt, and you've got to put over 100 tower blocks to 10, 10 stories high all across the town, even if you, you, could, you couldn't find the sites to do that on. Plus the fact that a hundred of them across the town would look pretty awful, you know. I mean, it's it, it well, it would change the town altogether from what it is to um, uh, when you start building another Manhattan, really. <laughs> no. I don't think you could go much higher than that because of the airport, you know, they wouldn't want buildings that go up too high. So, you know, it's very hard to work out where where all these people are going to live. It really is. OK, well, I guess we'll wrap it up there and uh, I'll say thank you very much. It's very nice to see you. OK, Mark, and thank you.